Good morning, friends. Welcome to our uh, Bible study moment today. As uh, we look towards the big 4th of July weekend coming up and celebrating uh, the anniversary of our freedom, um, I was thinking about something that uh, a French writer, Alexis de Tocqueville, wrote. He was a political scientist, a historian, uh, and a politician. And after visiting America in 1831, he wrote this. He said, I sought for the greatness of the United States in her commodious harbors, her ample rivers, her fertile fields, and boundless forests, and it was not there. I searched for it in her rich mines, her vast world commerce, her public school system, and in her institutions of higher learning, and it was not there. I looked for it in her democratic Congress and her matchless constitution, and it was not there. Not until I went into the churches of America and heard her pulpits flame with righteousness did I understand the secret of her genius and power. America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Friends, I'm afraid right now what we're witnessing is our nation ceasing to be good. And it's not because pulpits in America no longer flame with righteousness, but because the people no longer have ears to hear. They, they don't have a heart to listen for the most part. And so many don't even attend anymore. We've begun to stop being a, a good nation, a nation uh, that, that cares about one another and supports one another because we've stopped being a righteous nation. And righteousness, Proverbs 14, 34 tells us, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. So what is righteousness? Well, it's having a right relationship with God and with other people. You know, John Wesley talked about imparted righteousness, the, the gracious gift of God that enables a Christian disciple to really strive for holiness. Uh, so to act righteously is, as Jesus put it, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, life may not be fair, but we as God's people can be fair. We as Americans can be fair to one another. But to be righteous goes beyond that. To be righteous is also to love one another. Wesley challenged his followers to pray for the Holy Spirit to perfect them in love. And we're to do the same thing. The real fruit of the Spirit-filled church isn't emotionally packed services, uh, it's a community of believers. The real fruit of the church is, is compassion. It's becoming a family and, and allowing others to, to see the depth and the sincerity of the compassion and love and commitment to serving one another that we have. 1 John 4.18 tells us there is no fear in love, for perfect love drives out fear. Because you see, when you really love someone, that puts an end to competition and comparison uh, and, and, and self-defense, judgment, bigotry, gossip. All that goes away when we truly love people. And Jesus told his followers, they will know you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. So to be righteous, to do all these things, it's also to, to care for the least of these, you know, the sick, the imprisoned, the stranger, uh, the homeless, the poor, uh, the lost. We who are busy doing God's work need to be prayerful enough to discern what it is that God is working on now, where God is calling us to go and, and to, to plug in and to join 
uh, him in, in ministry to be working alongside Christ and what he's striving to do in this world. And to do that, we need to discern what his call is on our lives. You see, we don't need God to bless our plans. We need to be a blessing to God's plans. With uh, so many people in the world suffering and, and, and doing without and and with so much disunity and, and moral degradation that's going on in our country today, you know, uh, a lot of people say, well, it'll take an act of God to turn this all around. Well, God is acting. He's sending you. He's sending me. We are the disciples. We're the ones he's called to go now and to make a difference. Love your neighbor is not a suggestion. It was a commandment from Jesus Christ. In fact, he said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Not a suggestion, a command. We need to, to break this cycle that we've fallen into in this country of being so self-centered that we forget to serve others. We forget as Christians even, we become so caught up uh, in consumerism and, and it all being about me that we forget that it's not about me. It is about them. It's about me serving God, and the only way I can serve him is by serving others. So don't let the abundance that we've acquired through liberty and freedom make us selfish or forgetful. Because only if we really are one nation under God, can we be indivisible? And only then can there really be liberty and justice for all. So remember that we're called to a higher calling and that real freedom isn't just freedom from uh, oppression or tyranny. Real freedom is the freedom from the lies that Satan would feed us and to be free to live into the grace and the promise that Jesus Christ provides us. And that's living for one another so that we can live for him. May God bless you and may God truly bless America. Have a happy and a safe 4th.